It's 6 p.m. Good afternoon, everyone. I am calling this meeting to order. Um, it's, I am Mayor Yamika Robinson, and I'm asking everyone to please silence your cell phones before we begin our meeting on tonight. First, I need to make a motion to amend the agenda with the removal of resolution 2024.033 and the addition of a presentation to victims advocate slash investigator Yvonne McKnight. Just make a motion. Move to approve. Second. It has been properly moved and second. Any questions, council? I have a question. Why are we um, removing the resolution uh, 2024? Zero zero three for final reading. Why are we removing that resolution? Just to have um, more clarification and discussion on it later to bring it back if we if we can. Well, I'd like to um, since you made the motion to has it been adopted, approved. Well, I'd like to add to that that it does not appear that it's removed permanently, and that it does not appear on any future ordinances or resolutions in Lake City, South Carolina, nor any of the language contained within shall appear on any ordinance or resolution in Lake City, South Carolina, period. Permanently diluted. Any other comments or questions, Council? I want to know why can't we vote on it tonight and why we need to go to further discussion. And I feel that we should go ahead and vote on it tonight. OK. OK, so this will be the vote for to amend and to to amend the agenda of our removal of this resolution from this agenda. If there's, any, if there's no other questions or comments, all in favor for removing this resolution on tonight? Can we add to that permanently and in the future that it shall not appear on any agenda, any agenda item or any ordinance or resolution in the future? No, ma'am. That's, that's not part of my motion for tonight. Well, I can then add to that, that motion. All in favor, show of hands. To amend for tonight, correct? Yes. All opposed? Thank you, council members. The motion is dead. Yes, thank you. Next, we'll have an invocation led by Mayor Robinson and the Pledge of Allegiance led by Councilwoman Cooper. Can we all stand, please? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks, we give you honor, and we give you glory on this evening. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to be able to come back together to talk about the business of the city, the city of Lake City. Lord, we ask you to just have this meeting the way that you need and see fit for us to continue to move this city forward. Lord, please, please take care of all the families who are going through bereavement. Please ease their hearts and ease their minds. Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, can you please poll the city council members? Present. 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 President. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Next, I need a motion to adopt the agenda as printed. Wish to adopt. Second. It has been properly moved and second. Any questions, Council? Yes, I have a question. Um, I noticed that the, um, the format is very different on the agenda. Um, and I think. It's not, in my opinion, it's not totally inclusive of verbatim information that was shared during the meeting. It looks like you gave a conglomeration of um, just 
a synopsis of some of the discussion that took place. Uh, may I ask a question? Are you talking about the agenda or agenda. minutes? Or minutes. minutes. Okay, we're, we haven't gotten there yet. We're on the adoption of the agenda. Oh, go ahead. That, that, that's still hold when it comes to the minutes. Okay, any other questions or concerns about the agenda, adopting the agenda? It has been properly moved and second. No questions, no more questions or concerns. All in favor, show of hands. Thank you. Now we move to get a motion to approve the minutes. Approval of the minutes from the mayor and council meeting June 11, 2024, and special public call meeting held on June 17, 2024. Need a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. Has been properly moved and moved and second. Any questions now on the minutes? Okay, as I was about to uh, start repeating early, what I said earlier was I noticed the uh, format was different. And it appears to me that it's not verbatim. Yes, ma'am. And is, is there a reason for that? It's not a requirement to do verbatim. Municipal, the MASC frowns upon verbatim minutes. The only reason minutes are taken for motions only, and okay. actions that are taken, not for verbatim. Okay, you do have the backup tape with it if you need it. Okay, yeah, because uh, I'd like to get a copy of the um, backup tape, please. We also. And you also um, have it on no, Facebook Live that you can watch it as well. I'd like to get a copy of that can take it. I guess in that it will be an MP, I think an MP4, MP3 um, thing for you to go through. It's just that some of the minutes are, you know, verbatim are going 50, 60 pages long. And I have to read, even though we have the program that does it, I have to go back and, and retype and reiterate everything and read them all over again because it doesn't pick up proper sentences and stuff like that. Okay. So um, it, it takes a lot of time to do that. Okay, now when did um, MASC start this format? Oh, it's always been like that. Okay, because it's the first time I've seen it like this. Yeah, it's, 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 always, it's always been that way. Okay. But we have not been um, utilizing it. Thank you. Any other questions or concerns, Council? If none, all in favor for the approval of the minutes, show of hands. Thank you. Next on the agenda are our presentations. We have a number of presentations on tonight. Um, first, we'll be recognizing three young ladies for participating in Palmetto Girls State, Ms. Chandler Brandon, Abigail Toledo, and Zaria Brown. Then we'll have our proclamation read by um, Mayor Robinson and along with Mayor Pro Tem, Nicole Singletary, Arts and Health Proclamation. We have Ms. Paula Morris um, coming up to speak about Lake City Community Group. Reverend Marvin Hemingway, P.D. Denham Day and P.D. Youth Day, and Chief Carlos Castillo and Mr. Orton Bellamy from Atlantic Beach for a war presentation to Amanda Diaz and Dedrick Graham. In that order, please. Ms. Chandler Brandon. We can get all the ladies, young ladies up here. Ms. Abigail Toledo. And Zaria Brown. Good afternoon. So these young ladies represented Lake City, South Carolina very well. And I was able to witness myself, because this is my fourth year actually speaking at Palmetto Girls State, which was held at, in Clinton, South Carolina at Presbyterian College. Um, and I'm just very, very proud and very honored to be able to recognize you three ladies tonight. And I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart as your mayor for representing the city of Lake City like you did and to continue to do great things in your life. Certificate of Achievement, I'm sorry. <laughs> All the certificates read, Certificate of Achievement, the City of Lake City recognizes Chandler Brandon as has successfully completed the Palmetto Girls State program, which consists of a one-week leadership and citizenship training program on July 9, 2024, signed by yours truly, the Honorable Mayor Yamika Robinson. And as Mayor Robinson just stated, all of the Certificates read the same, but this is to Abigail Toledo. 
Zaria. Zaria Brown. <laughs> This program, if it, Palmetto Girls State, you actually have, they actually have 600 plus girls there from across the state of South Carolina. And I was very honored to be able to be on the stage along with M.G. Whitley, Councilwoman um, G.M. Whitley from Mount Pleasant to be able to talk to these young ladies about being in the leadership role that I'm in in the city of Lake City. So uh, once again, congratulations and continue to do great things. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> All righty, so next on the agenda we have the proclamation. This proclamation is initiated by the NLC Arts for Everybody, One Nation, One Project. One Nation, One Project is a national arts and health initiated design to activate the power of arts to repair the social fabric of our nation and heal our communities. We are bringing together artists, local governments, and community health providers to foster equitable recovery and improve health in communities across America. Our new campaign titled Arts for Everybody will show how the arts can lead to a healthier people and healthier communities. On July 27, 2024, in big cities and rural countries, Hundreds of people will create new works that show the world where they come from. The results will be a celebration of America, of unity through diversity. It will be an outpouring of local joy. Arts for Everybody will do more than entertain and inspire. It marks a breakthrough moment in the relationships between the arts and health in America. Thank you, Mayor Patel. I'm gonna grab that. Yes. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Arts and Health Day Proclamation, whereas the National League of Cities recognizes that arts and culture have a tremendous impact on cities, towns, and villages across the country, whereas the National League of Cities recognizes that the impact of arts and culture spans economic development, community and individual health, housing, and the built environment, workforce development, civic participation, education, activism, and social cohesion, whereas participation in arts experiences has been shown to reduce depression and anxiety, improve physical health outcomes, reduce social isolation, and build strong community networks. Whereas through Arts for Everybody, the National League of Cities has championed the work of cities of all sizes to increase community well-being through partnerships with the arts and artists' employment. Whereas the City of Lake City, South Carolina is a proud member of the National League of Cities and has benefited from the organization's research, technical expertise, federal advocacy, and opportunities to learn from other local governments. Whereas today, the National Venture Arts for Everybody is celebrating and amplifying the intrinsic health benefits of the arts and culture with, with 18 communities across the United States. Whereas Lake City, South Carolina values the contribution of the arts and culture sector in the city of Lake City and how the arts make our community unique, engaging, and robust. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Yamika Robinson, the Honorable Mayor, along with the entire city council and administration, hereby proclaims July 27, 2024, as Arts and Health Day in celebration of all that the arts and culture con con contribute to contribute to the social cohesion and well-being of the entire city of Lake City, South Carolina. And witness whereof I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the city of Lake City. South Carolina to be affixed on this ninth day of July to recognize the 27th day of July proclaimed as Arts and Health Day in the city of Lake City, South Carolina. Signed by your tr yours truly, the Honorable Mayor Yumika Robinson. Thank you. Oh, 
Marquez. Good evening, Mayor and City Council persons. Um, about Excuse two me, years ago as I was walking the track early one morning, um, the Lord dropped in my spirit to about unity here in Lake City. So immediately I called Coach Al and told him what the vision was and he bought into it and he had some other people that he called up and then um, we had a meeting. We didn't have a name of the group, but we had a meeting. Um, at our first meeting, Mr. Hal Elwitz, who was a member of this group, said that before we try, and first let me tell you that um, community, our vision is, is this right here. Community is an organization and our vision is to break the barrier between racism, denomination, and socialism here in Lake City. But Hal said to us the first meeting that what we need to do as a group, we need to meet several times to see where our hearts are at, to see whether we have any hate in our heart, any racism, any bias in our heart, because how can we gonna help somebody else if we are still messed up? And those meetings was awesome, they were great to get us to where we're at today. And we have done a lot in this city. We have had prayer walks. Um, we um, had prayed once a month at the high school gym. Some of you have attended. Um, we've had community feeding, meal of thanks for Thanksgiving where we go and knock on the doors. The community back here, the community on 52, and we give the meals to um, the resident there. We've had a cookout for our youth at the new park down there. We have visited churches in the community, and we still got to continue that. And we had, prayer, we had a prayer vision for one of our fallen officers, Lieutenant John Smith. Stuart. I, I'm Stuart. I'm sorry. I, I see Stuart right here. <laughs> and I just want to say to you that we as community, a lot of our group is not here today. Hal, if anybody know Hal, he's somewhere chasing some, some ball games somewhere. <laughs> some is on the beach. Some are at work and not make it. But we are a unified group. And there's a lot of other things that we have planned um, to do in the city. We have some events coming up that you will hear about it later here on um, what we are doing. So why I'm telling you about us as community, this is Annalisa Smith. S Smith, yes. I got it. This is Ms. Cassandra Bennett, Bennett. And this is Mayor Yamika, um, Yamika um, Robinson. <laughs> we have Hal Elwitz, Mary Alice Board, uh, Tommy Board, Dr. Laura Hickson, Will Tommy, Stacy Morris, Vince Hanna, um, Tasha Brown, Valerie Burtney, um, also Gladys. Katera. Yes. <laughs> we have all, um, all of those are part of our group that when we come together, we meet every second Saturday in the month right now at Ministries on the Move for Christ to plan and to implement things for our community. So I just want to say to the mayor, who is a part of this team, to the city council, to all of you that's here, we want you to come and walk this walk with us. We want you to come and work with us. We want to see you, um, Lake City be the greatest city in South Carolina when it comes to unity. We, we have Catholics, um, a member of this group. We have Baptists. We have Holiness. We have non-denominational. We have superintendent, mayor, teachers, um, evangelists. We have a diverse group here that we work together. We have some blue-collar workers but we come unified. So to the mayor, to Lake City, City City Council, as we move forward to bring unity in the city, to find the needs for our people in the city, to do the best that we can. We had our first gala last year, and we thank God for that. Um, we can have, we have some finance now because we was using our own monies. We adopt somewhere around about 14 or 16 students every year from the Lake City um, schools in this area. And whatever their wish list is, we purchase it. If it's iPads, only thing we don't buy is cell phones. We're not going to purchase any cell phones. <laughs> but we try to meet that wish list for these children who are unfortunate. And I wish you could come to one of our Christmas gatherings to see the tears in these children's eyes when we give them their gifts. So again, the minutes are running out. Next city. Hey, city Council, Mayor, we need you. Let's walk this together. Let's do this together to make Lake City the best city in the state of South Carolina. Thank you. Thank you. In our scripture, Psalms 133. Y'all know that 
Scripture. You know the term. Would you say, okay, Psalm 133 is where it says how good it is when brothers dwell together in unity. And behind that unity is an exclusion point. Thank you, Ms. Hall. I apologize. I do see Reverend Hemingway. Yes. I didn't see him in the back back there. <laughs> Greetings, Mayor Robertson, City Council, and the City of Lake City. It is an honor and pleasure to stand before you today to give thanks and praise to the outstanding City of Lake City. Uh, April of 2024, we had our first PD Denim Day. We had great speakers, motivational speakers to the community that were out, food trucks, and we're looking to do a greater job next year in the city of Lake City. It was so phenomenal that we are coming back to Lake City next year for our second event. I would like to present an award to Lake City, Outstanding Leadership Award presented to the city of Lake City in appreciation of outstanding leadership for the women of the PD. You just did not honor the women and encourage the women of Lake City, but for surrounding areas that were here. And I just want to thank you. It's a small award, but we don't have much money. But from our hearts, we just want to say thank you. We're going to work on more money so we can get a larger plaque next time. Thank you. Also, we have our second annual PD Youth Day in Florence, 513. Barn Street this coming Saturday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. We have uh, a large number of vendors coming out. I think we have 22 vendors. We have people from Columbia coming down. We've now received a state resolution uh, from Senator Mike Rickenbach and all of the senators at the state house. So we are looking to get more funding. So next year, the PD Youth Day will be in the great city of Lake City. And we want to do the same thing that we've been doing in Florence. Uh, we have books, bags to give out, school supplies, uh, free food. Please come out and eat this food. <laughs> Two Walmarts of Florence have donated all the food, so we all have plenty of food, water, and other items. And we also supposed to be getting a truckload of water from Niagara Falls. And when we do, uh, we're going to split some of the water for the city of Lake City. So when we get that truckload, we'll let you know and we'll bring the water. Over. Thank you. And our speaker, our speaker for um, on Saturday for PD Youth Day will be Senator Mike Rickenbaugh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. presentation I wish to bring to the point that the individual you wish to honor tonight is here in the room yes but we broadcast on Facebook and well, we prefer right. that not that face not to be broadcast well, for her right. because of her duties that's right chief miles will accept in their honor okay. thank you, thank you. Thank you. chief <laughs> uh, good evening uh, to the mayor uh, city council members Town Man Administrator, Chief Police, Town Clerk, thank you for your coordination to make this happen today, and the audience here at large. Good evening. On behalf of the town of Atlantic Beach, we'd like to recognize two outstanding officers that participated in the Myrtle Beach and North Myrtle Beach uh, Bike Fest, better known as Atlantic Beach Bike Fest. It's, a, a it's been a tradition the last 35 years that uh, doing Memorial Day weekend. That was uh, this activity has been going on, and this group of bikers come from all over the nation. A great time, it's a family event, and it was very enjoyable. From my observation, as a retired United States Army officer, 
observed two outstanding officers that deployed from Lake City to the town of Atlantic Beach, instantaneously acclimated into the environment they were in, and that shows that they were well-trained officers. That's reflected for the chief, thank you, chief, for sending us two outstanding trained officers. We really appreciate that. That's very emblematic. Uh, from my observation, as I say, I'm a former commander at, at different levels, and, and being in that environment and watching those officers perform, it was immaculate. Uh, they were there with the officers, communication skills, adaptability. You're talking 92, 95 degree weather. Uh, we're talking work, working 14 hours a day and without any incident. So they were a major asset to our operations. We had the Highway Patrol, SLED, Department D, DNR, North Myrtle Beach, Curry County, Myrtle Beach Police Department. So it was a joint operation. And we were pleased, and to show our, our gratitude to those officers, we'd like to recognize them with a plaque uh, certificate of appreciation. I will read it, and Chief Casilla will present it. It's a certificate of appreciation. This, is, this certificate is proudly presented to Major Dietrich Graham. You're commended for your outstanding performance of duty during the Lang Beach Black Festival during the period of May 24, 2024 through May 27, 2024. Your significant contribution ensured the efficiency of the administrative support and safety of the bike festival participants, signed by Jake Evans, mayor of the town of Atlantic Beach. This officer, uh, again, performed in an immaculate way and beyond the call of duty, both officers did. You are commended for your outstanding performance of duty during the Atlantic Beach Bike Festival during the period of May 2024 through May 27, 2024. Your significant contribution ensured the efficiency of the administrative support and safety of the bike festival participants signed by Mayor Jake Evans, town of Atlantic Beach. Mr. Bellamy, did you want to get in a picture? We have something. Yes, Thank you. So again, on behalf of the town of Lane Beach, Mayor uh, Evans and the city council members, we appreciate your service and support. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the presentations. Um, one last thing on the presentations that, by my mistake, I wanted to ask. Oh, we do have one more presentation. Great. Okay. That. By my mistake, I do apologize. Can all the parents of the young ladies that went to Palmetto Girls State please stand? Because you're a very big part of these young ladies' lives. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mr. Hall. Chief Miles, may I ask you to step up and introduce your promotion for our new victims advocate? And um, investigator, please. Afternoon, Mayor and Council. Um, I'd like to introduce to the citizens here as well as Mayor and Council, Yvonne McKnight. Uh, she's not a new face to me. I worked with Yvonne back in, when was Yvonne? 2014. Yeah, 2012, 2014. So she's not a new face to us. Um, she worked here at the police department during that time in a different capacity. She came back to us from SLED, and she's completed her training at the Criminal Justice Academy, and she's worked with the patrol division. She's got become acclimated to that, and she's now being moved over into the investigations division. 
position she'll be filling will be victim's advocate and special victim's investigator. She will handle primarily sexual assault cases, domestic violence cases, and cases that require special assistance that also is going to require some special training that she's well, well equipped for and already adapted to. That's awesome. Congratulations. <laughs> Some proud parents out there. <laughs> please stand, please stand, please stand. Get a picture. Oh, grandparents. Oh, yeah. Everybody stand. All right, Vaughn. Vaughn got the whole thing. <laughs> yes, that's what it's about that family support. Thank you so much for being here. But, Mayor and Council, but it also shows that promoting from within gives the staff an opportunity of growth and the potential of success. Yes. Thank, Thank you, you all so for being much. Here. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Would you like to say anything? <laughs> okay. I'm excited. Oh. When I was told that I was being promoted, um, I made sure I let Chief Miles know he would not be disappointed. Um, I always wanted to be an investigator, primarily on cold cases, but um, hopefully I'll get to work those also. Um, but thank you, guys. If anyone needs information, feel free to give me a call. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. I know you're going to do an outstanding job. Next, we're on the agenda. We have our public comment period. Comments are limited to two minutes per person, and no personal or verbal attacks will be entertained. The council is interested in hearing your concerns, but speakers should not expect council action or deliberation on subject matters brought up during the public comment period. Topics requiring further investigation will be referred to the city administration and may be scheduled for a future agenda. Please make sure to sign in and leave your name and address for the record with the city clerk to council. Any public comments? Thank you. Uh, yes, my name is Laura Davis. Well, I have two problems. Uh, the first one is Moore Street being hell, but the main problem is 541 Moore Street where I live. Uh, my neighbor, part of family, has got five dogs in the back of his yard. And you can smell on the back, in the front, and the side. And I shouldn't have to live there like that. And it took me 33 years and a half to pay for that house. Okay, my husband called somewhere and he said nothing, nobody can do. But the odor. Before I get them out, under my carpool tree, you can smell the dogs. I shouldn't have to live like that. And then, I didn't know you could make dolls in the city. And it goes on all kind of way. Mm -hmm. They be hollering at night when they make them. I would assume you have to have license to do that. And then, you put them up on the board, and the odor is worse than that. Five dogs in the backyard, and my backyard and his yard joining together, and it's about from me to you. I don't have to live like that no. and got to pay tax. I should be able to live decent without smelling all that. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, I have a lot to say, but two minutes. I'll drop it down to you. First thing, we need to. Drop this can, down. Can you state your name? My name is Tim McFadden. Okay. And first thing we need to uh, report on is the water. The water bill keeps going up, and we got leaks all over town. All over town. Every street you go on in the hood, mm. there's a leak. All right, second thing we need to talk about is when they come, when the police officer ride through the hood, 
It's like Darlington Racetrack. Mm. If you slow it down, I'll be out there walking with my grandkids. Okay? We don't have sidewalk in the hood like you guys over here in the city. <laughs> That's all I've got to say. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Biden. Hey, no, man. <laughs> Any other public comment? If no, we're going to move on to our business, legislative part. If anyone wants to exit, go ahead and exit. <laughs> Thank you all for being here tonight. Have a nice evening. Do you want to stay or leave? All right, Mayor and Council, if it pleases Mayor and Council, I have for your consideration resolution number 2024.007, uh, final reading. Is this a resolution or ordinance? All right, because it says resolution. All right, re ordinance number 2024.007, an ordinance to amend the Code of City of Lake City, South Carolina, Chapter 16, to add a new subsection providing that a person who violates any section of the city code of ordinance with the intent to intimidate another person or persons in whole or in part because of the action or perceived race, color, creed, religion, ancestry, gender, sexual orientation, gender identity, physical or mental disability, or national origin of any other person or persons is guilty of the separate offense of the hate intimidation and shall be punished as provided herein. I need a motion to approve ordinance 2024.007 for final reading. Motion to approve 2024.007. Second. It has been properly moved and second. Any questions, council? What brought this about, this ordinance? I think everybody's, uh, is uh, 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 heading in this direction. Uh, the state house did not adopt a hate crime, and, and this is in similar uh, it's a good, it's a good. aspects to what the hate crime was on the yeah. Senate floor. Yes. Um, basically, in, in front of the municipal association, um, South Carolina is one of the only two states they have not enacted statewide hate crime legislation. Um, so there are a number of municipalities, I think right now 15 known in the state of South Carolina that has passed this ordinance. And Lake City is not one as of yet, but it would definitely help to pass this bill in the legislation. <clears throat> Any other questions, council? If none, all in favor, show of hands. Mayor and Council, for your consideration, resolution number 20, 24.031, final reading. The City of Lake City Mayor and Council accept grant funds from the South Carolina Aeronomics in the amount of $95,568 for the Lake City Municipal Airport that will be used to tree removal tree trimming along the along with the perimeter fence repair and or replacement and all matters related thereto. 
Need a motion to approve resolution 2024.031 for final reading. Motion to approve. Second. It has been properly moved and second. Any questions, Council? Has anyone been um, identified um, as to who you're going to hire to send out any bids or anything as to who's going to do it? This has uh, not been bid out yet. They will follow the procurement policy to bid these out. What will you do? Um, when you do, if you will, include those all of the bids in the agenda packet so council can decide. Any other questions or concerns on this resolution? Is this? I have a question. Um, how often? How often does do the repairs need to be done? Like, how often will will they be done? The last time the trees were cut at the airport, I think, was about seven years ago. Uh, but the fence is now falling down and is in dire need of repair. It's not just the fact of closing off the airport and securing it again. It's also uh, the safety hazard that anybody can now just walk onto that property. Okay, so you've been getting different businesses or contractors, one to do the trees, one to do the fence repairs? That's to my understanding. A fence, re a fence repair person can't don't do trees. So it will be two vendors and two bids. Okay, do you know how much um, is allotted for the fence repair or the tree cutting? The aeronomics said that the $33,960, I think, is for the fence, and $85,500 is the total for the tree trimming. State funds of 68.4, state funds of 27.168. These have already been awarded to the city. We just have to accept them or send the, a denial letter that we don't wish for the funds. Any other questions, Council? If none, all in favor of this resolution, show of hands. Mayor and Council, for your consideration, resolution number 2024.033, final reading. Mayor and Council, accept. Oh, this one's all, correct? It died. It's dead. Oh, it died. Okay. All right, sorry about that. All right, Mayor and Council, for your consideration, resolution number 2024.034, final reading. The City of Lake City is seeking. In consideration for the storm drain work performed on McAllister Street Apartments and the City of Lake City will credit the building fee review fee uh, the sum of not to exceed $110,000 in all matters related thereto. So basically in exchange for us having to pay to put the storm drains in, we will waive uh, about 90% of their building fee and let them pay the, the entire bill. Yeah. The people that's put doing the work over that. Of McAllister apartment. apartments, apartments, correct. There. Yeah. So that means we don't have to pay the bill. Okay. I need a motion to approve resolution 2024.034 for final reading. Second. Motion. Motion to approve. <laughs> it's been properly moved and second. Between the guys. Yeah, one of, one of us. <laughs> And the other guy second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been properly moved and second. Any questions, council? Any other questions? If none, all in favor, show of hands. Uh, Mayor and council, for your consideration, the, Lake, the city of Lake City is seeking uh, Reappointment of the following members to the Airport Commission Board. Dusan Fidel, expired date of 8 11, 2027. George L. Cohen, MD, expiration date of 8 11, 2027. Tony Whitlock, expiration date 8 11, 2027. Robert Gottman, expiration date 8 11, 2027. And Kevin Lynch, expiration date 8 11, 2027. 
Need a motion to approve resolution 2024.035 for final reading. Motion to approve. Second. Has been properly moved and second. Any questions? Do we have anyone else to express an interest in serving? Madam Clerk. Do we advertise for it? Any other questions, Council? If none, all in favor, show of hands. Mayor and Council, for your consideration, uh, Mayor and Council accepts grant funds in the amount of $858,750 from the state of South Carolina for the city of Lake Kitt City to replace approximately 300 gooseneck fittings at approximately 300 water service addresses within the city limits of Lake City and all matters related thereto. Need a motion to approve resolution 2024.036 for final reading. Motion to approve. Second. It has been properly moved and second. Any questions, Council? Could you explain to everyone what is a gooseneck fitting? <laughs> Actually, what it is doing is removing the iron. Lead piping yeah, well. from the existing homes of about 300 we've identified. The state will pay us uh, to change them out. Well, will that like have caused like any type of um, leakage or anything like that? Or no. It's, it's, it's all just a safety. Of lead. It's all because of lead. Yeah, okay. lead and safety. Gotcha. It's Thank actually you. it's actually a nationwide. Yes. Um, okay. Can we get a list of the um, 300 homes here that have the addresses? That have been um, identified. For, may I ask for what reason? Okay. I'm not. I'm not going to dignify that with response. William, will you please supply provide a list of the identified addresses, please? The identified addresses have not been put on paper yet. It is an estimate that we have 300 based on the age okay. of our you, system. When do you anticipate getting the addresses? Um, they're working on compiling that as we speak. Okay. Well, when you get them, will you please send all the council members a list? If they want, I know I would like to get a list. If you get it, all the council members get it, so everybody gets it. Are there any other questions on this resolution? If none, all in favor, show of hands. Mayor and Council, your consideration, resolution number 2024.037, final reading. Mayor and Council accepts the grant funds in the amount of, I'm reading the wrong one, am I not? Nope, the grant funds are 858500 from the state of South Carolina uh, for the city of Lake City to rehab it and repair existing Matthew Road tank and all, and, and the city of Lake City drinking water system and all matters related thereto. Need a motion to approve resolution 2024.037 for final reading. Motion to approve. Second. second. It has been properly moved and second. Any questions, council? If none, all in favor, show of hands. Thank you. Mayor and council, um, page 40 of your um, Report is the financials uh, through June 30th, and as I will say, we still have revenue that we'll be putting back. Uh, taxes are paid in the rears. We have gotten not gotten all our money, and we will receipt but receipt those into our system as a receivable when they come. So the general fund, we have nine million sixty-six thousand. We've spent ten million three eighty-one. So we have 89% of our revenue in, which is 102% of our uh, expenses, uh, overspent the revenue as of this date by 1 million three. In the water area, we have revenue of 1 million 942, that's 87% of the budget. And we have expenses of 1 million eight, we have a surplus of $70,000. In the sewer side, we have 3 million one, as 80% of the budget, we have expenses of $3,995,000. We've overspent by $888,000. In the stormwater area, we have uh, a year-to-date number of $212,000. 
After a fifty thousand dollar expense, we have revenue ex uh, excess of one hundred sixty two one hundred twenty thousand dollars. In the reserve account for the water, we have a year to date of seventy three thousand seven hundred forty. In the year to date reserve for the sewer, we have a number of seventy two one thirty five. That's the financials. Mayor and Council, with your consideration, I present to you the bills to be approved. Bills uh, one through nine. Need a motion to approve bills items one through nine for July 9, 2024. Motion to approve. Second. It has been properly moved and second. Any questions, Council? Um, Straw, what happens if we don't pay? Do we have to pay late fees? If, uh, we oh, yes. Back a month. Yes. If we're not paid on time, we do get charged late fees. Now, we can call and get consideration, but at this date and time with the economy, due to the way it is, it's hard for them to even want to give consideration. Any other questions, Council, on the bills? Items one through nine? If none, all in favor, paying the bills. Items one through nine, show of hands. Thank you, Mayor and Council. That's any, any opposed? Thank you, Mayor and Council. That's all I have for you this evening. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Next, we'll have our Mayor and Council report. And we will begin with Councilman Brown. Good evening, everyone. Um, nice to see everyone come out. Nice to see everyone got there. Awards tonight. Uh, that was nice and pleasant. Um, I don't have too much to report. I know I had a citizen come to me and ask me about um, a treat. If you could get the, probably code enforcement or someone go to Singletary and Main Street, they say it's like some bushes or something blocking the road whenever they go to turn out. And then I had, I'm not jumping lines anymore, but I had someone tell me over there on McGregory Circle and M Street, but no, Gregory Circle and Ray Street. Say it's some bushes or something in the way. Two, it, two, it's McGregory two. And McGregory, McGregory and um, you say Ray? Ray, Ray. 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 yeah, Ray. McGregor, McGregor and Ray and Singletary and Main. Right. Uh, that's the only thing I got to report. And other than that, I'm having my Crime Watch meeting tomorrow at Montclair Church. Uh, Montclair Missionary Baptist Church, 1009 East Main Street at 6 o'clock. I'd love to see everyone come out in the 10. Uh, guest speaker will be Chief Patrick Miles. He will come and talk to us about some of the things that's going on in our district. If anyone want to come from any other district and you want your opinion, you know, talk with him. He, he'll be open and talk to you. Other than that, that's pretty much for all I got. Mayor, my apologies. I did overlook our chief of police. I have to make a brief report on the oh, car. Yeah. <laughs> that's fine. If you'll step up with your microphone, please. Ask, was Councilman Brown, were you you done? Is that okay with you? Yeah, come on and I'll come back up. Okay. <laughs> I apologize. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon again, Mayor and Council. Um, I'd like to take a second to thank Administrator Bellamy and Chief Costello from Atlantic Beach PD. What, what, what you saw there was the mutual aid in action. Mm -hmm. They called and had a request that we send some officers down for bike week, and we comply with that request, and we had two officers go. And you heard directly from the Administrator and Chief of you know, how they performed. That's what happens when we have cooperations between departments throughout the state. A lot of people ask, why do we have a mutual aid with Atlantic Beach? Well, Atlantic Beach, they, they have a pretty pretty large function, pretty large event within that, that small town that they have there. It's like we, we have our field. That's a pretty large event for our small town. So luckily, we haven't had a need to call on other cities for mutual aid. However, in the past, we've had, we have had to rely on uh, SLED as well as the Sheriff's Office for Artsfield. Um, but also, I'd be proud to say that we are as full now as we've ever been at Lake City Police Department in the last 
five years at least. That's great. Hundred percent. We have more officers on staff, more officers there to, to stand and take the call. And what we're doing is we're doing some slight restructuring within the police department and officers like Bond who you know, they, they stand up and take the call. You know, we're we're gonna have their back and, and support them as well. Uh, but getting into the statistics for the month of June, um, just a reminder, the month of May, we had a total of 1,380 calls for service. The month of June, we've had 1,924 calls for service. So that's an increase, which we also had a holiday, and we also had a function within the city, which is this law enforcement network. Um, I've spoken with a few council members about what that is and explain what that is. That's where pretty much every law enforcement agency in the 12th Judicial Circuit, Florence and Marion Counties, they participate in the network and we're part of that network. And they, we, they go around to different cities, different municipalities, different areas in the county and they, they do enforcement action. Um, so that's the reason for the increase in some of these and some of the reasons for the increase in some of these numbers is going to be, it's, it's proactive policing. Uh, what that is, is, is where the calls are generated by the officers. Uh, they, they don't wait for the 911 call. They're out there actively searching for criminal activity. So they generate that call. And in response to crime, we're going to kick up enforcement action. That's kind of what we do. Um, so again, 1,924 calls for service. That includes 471 traffic stops, 68 burglar alarms, 35 domestic violence calls. Uh, Bob, that's, she's going to be handling a lot of those now. Um, 30, 39 follow-up calls where an officer goes out and follows up with the complainants or the victims or even suspects. Um, we had 878 property checks. That accounts for 45.63% of our call volume for the month of for the month of June. 878. Is that because of the summertime? Or it is. Okay. That is where what these property checks are is businesses and homeowners and you know property owners within the city. They request that, that we do property checks in relation to them going on vacation or, or whatever the case may be. And we go out and we check the property for them. Sometimes they request just a simple ride by, be present in the area. Sometimes they request that we get out and walk around their house. And we, we do everything we can to, to fulfill that request. Um, so 878 property checks, 24 suspicious persons called, 22 motor vehicle accidents. 20 disorderly calls. Um, that's simply an individual being disorderly in public. Somebody's called 911 on. We have 20 of those for the month of June. Uh, 30 suspicious vehicle calls, kind of the same thing. Um, seven vandalism calls. 33 harassment and threatening calls. 22 warrant services. Uh, six assaults. 21 larcenies. Five reported shooting calls. That's that doesn't mean there was five people that got shot in Lake City. That means somebody dialed 911 five times and said they they've heard what they believe to be gunfire. Um, ten break-ins, uh, ten reported break-ins, seventeen trespassing calls, uh, and going into the traffic stuff. Out of those 471 traffic stops, which again counted for 24.48 percent of our call volume, um, they issued only 121 traffic tickets. <coughs> so it. I think anybody would be hard pressed to say Lake City is just out here writing tickets to be writing tickets. Um, 471 traffic stops and only 21 tickets where somebody was actually charged a monetary amount for the infraction that they committed. They have their day in court. They can plead guilty, not guilty, and the judge can you know, adjudicate the case however he or she sees fit. I think what that shows is again, month after month, that the officers are cooperative. They cooperate with these violators. They don't write them a ticket for everything they can. They're writing more warning tickets than, than they are actual traffic tickets. Uh, and I think that's a good thing. Sometimes it's just you need the education. You don't necessarily need the ticket to receive that education. But of the 121 traffic tickets that was issued, 23 of them were motor vehicle viola license violations. There was four simple possessions of marijuana that was written on traffic tickets. Ten speeding tickets were issued nine operating uninsured vehicles, uh, 17 driver's license violations, um, 16 driving under suspensions, and three DUIs. And in addition to the, the numbers that I've stated so far, out of all of that, there was 140 incident reports done, 26 arrests made, 61 arrest warrants issued, and 38 arrest warrants served. Um, that pretty much closes out the statistics for June. 
Thank you, Chief. Mark. Thank you, Chief. Sorry for our, my oversight. <laughs> Just forget about well. meeting. <laughs> Like I said, um, I will be having my Crown Watch meeting um, tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. Love to see everyone come out and talk with Chief Miles. And if you have any questions for me, I'll, I'll be sure to answer them the best way I can. And I'll come back to Mr. Hall or the mayor, and we'll, we'll get the best answer we can get for you. Other than that, have a nice night. <coughs> Good evening, everyone. Um, again, I would like to say congrats to the young ladies um, that participated in the Pamela Girls State. Uh, congratulations to you again, and continue to do, uh, even though they're gone, I'm sure. <laughs> Someone, you never know who's watching. So uh, <laughs> continue to, uh, to do great things for yourself and, and, and for your family as well. Um, I would like to thank everyone who came out to the, uh, to the district meeting for uh, districts uh, one and four. Um, also, uh, Chief Miles was there to uh, give us information about uh, starting a crime watch um, community group in our communities. Um, I hope that everyone gained the right knowledge um, in order to start a crime watch group in your community. And if you have any other questions or concerns, <clears throat> if you have any other questions or concerns, um, about how to do it. I'm sure he's always available or you can um, contact me as well and I will get you um, get you all the necessary information in order to do so. Um, just wanted to also, I'm sure maybe everyone has probably gotten a postcard about the census. Um, I just ask that you guys take heed to that and then whenever anyone comes out concerning the census that, well, I have gotten one, but um, yeah. Oh, oh, that's interesting. Well, uh, this yeah, I've gotten one. Okay, so well, I guess it was only for me. Um, but yeah, so moving forward. Yeah, it was, yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, okay, moving forward. Um, just wanted to also give you guys a um a heads up on uh, the kids eat free at MUSC at Black River. So a lot of kids um they rely on school meals. And of course, with legislative and everything, you know that uh, the school lunch program was cut out. So therefore, I know that Black River is far away, but if you can take someone down there to eat, they're um, feeding um, this the, the entire month, um, for, uh, July the 1st uh, through the 31st, excuse me, I think it started at 11 o'clock, if I'm not mistaken, but please take a child there because you just never know who may not get something to eat. We are very fortunate to be able to go to any place we want, most of us, to get what we want to eat and how, you know, and eat as much as we can. And some people don't even have that. So we gotta be thankful and we just have to be continue to look out for one another, especially a child. Um, and the only other thing is William, if you could just speak with the trash department, well, waste the waste department because I've seen some complaints about trash being left in the streets in different neighborhoods. Um, and I think it was, this time it was on Darlington Street. And so we want everybody's neighborhood to be taken care of and to look um, pleasant. Well, this coming out the 96 gallon rollout carts. Uh, that is falling out of the truck. Okay. Ooh, yeah. Right yeah, that did, yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 it's, yeah. So if that could just be, um, if we could do something with that, and of course, trash is nasty and it stinks. So yeah, so yeah, actually, yeah. If you could do that, that'll be that'll be great. And I just encourage every. Oh, and also, it's a lot of um, back to school um, programs that's going on back to school um, giveaways because I think Lake City's having one tomorrow. So therefore, if you have a child, and I think it's first come first serve, correct? So we have 200 and se yeah, Facebook, 275 book bags. So that is great. Um, if you guys can bring your kids out, it is first, one, first come, first serve. So if you can do that, um, of course, that will help some parents out with school supplies. Four to six. And food for four to six. Thank you. I appreciate you. Yeah, for four to six. So other than that, that's it. Y'all right. have a good <laughs> month. Continue to be safe and be vigilant. Okay.
Oh, it's me. Okay, um, thank you all for coming out. Um, Council Member Cooper said pretty much some of what I wanted to say, and I want to thank her for that information on the school, on the lunch program for children and um, the census. And a lot of the other information is very, um, very um, well needed. Again, thank you for coming. And when you come next month, bring your neighbor, a friend, bring about 10, 12 people. Okay? Thank, thank you all. Oh, sorry. no, I was just saying. Oh. Thank, you. <laughs> thank you all for coming out. Um, Council Member Cooper definitely took my whole report a little bit. So, um, <laughs> just to reiterate a little bit. Um, <laughs> I know. Uh, congratulations to the three young ladies um, that was awarded tonight. Also, thank you for those who came out to District 1 and 4 meeting. Also, thank you to Chief Miles for being there. Um, the back to school bash is tomorrow. Council member Brown meeting is tomorrow. Um, what else tomorrow? Church tomorrow. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but thank you all for coming out. <laughs> Nothing to report. <laughs> Just say good night, I guess. Good night. <laughs> thank you, councilmen, um, members, for your for your reports on tonight. Um, I want to thank everyone for coming out tonight and voicing their concerns. Thank you for um, viewing on Facebook and our social media platforms. I want to thank all the ones who made presentations and the ones who were presented to tonight. Um, to our young ladies from Palmetto Girls State, I'm just so elated and happy for them. Um, like I said it before, this was my fourth year attending Girls State. And I love to see our young women, young ladies from the school district being a part of that experience. Um, it's a week long. I don't say a week long, but they say a week long and they even go to, to the state house to meet Boys State there and they all come together. So um, it's, it's a great experience for our young ladies across the state of South Carolina. Um, thanks to Ms. Paula and the communi community group um, for coming out and speaking about community. Um, let's continue to just do great things in the city of Lake City um, to keep spreading the message about the power of unity, the strength of being together and working together. So I appreciate you all and this group, anybody can be a part of it. So if you want to, contact the head lady right there, Ms. Paula Morris. Um, <clears throat> also, thanks to Reverend Hemingway. I think he's already left for the uh, recognition for the city of Lake City for participating in the first um, PD Denim Day. Uh, I really appreciate him. Thanks to Chief Castillo and Mr. Bellamy for recognizing our officers on tonight. Um, and like Chief Miles said, that's, that's how the mutual aid works. And I appreciate them coming out and recognizing and appreciate, appreciating our officers. Congratulations, Ms. Vaughn. I, I say Ms. Vaughn. <laughs> Investigator Vaughn. <laughs> okay. Congratulations. And we are here to support you in any way that we can. We appreciate you. Um, the announcements, like we stated before, time after time, our back to school bash is tomorrow. Um, so please come out first come, first serve. Bring your student, bring your children. You yeah. have to bring a city hall. If you actually, when you walk out, you'll see the big tent. It's right over there. We're going to have food. We're going to have music. We're going to have backpacks. Um, there'll be clear bags at Florence School District 3 once our children is to have. Um, so please do come out from 4 to 6. Um, tomorrow. So bring you have to bring your child with you to receive the backpack. Please bring your child with you. Also, we have our Small Business Minority and Veteran Small Business Expo that will be happening this Friday. And I am very happy that we were contacted from the SBA, which is the Small Business Administration, to wanting to host that Small Business Expo here in the city of Lake City. I've never known for that to happen. I've asked them, and they said they don't know if it happened either. So for them to be looking at our city, we are doing something. And it will be a, a lot of people coming from different counties, Lee County, Winsburg County, Clarendon County, from all over to come to the Small Business Expo. It'll be Friday, July 12th from 10 to 1 at the Continuum. So if you have a small business or you're just thinking about starting a small business or just want information, come out. I we will have our congressman, James Clyburn, who will be present, and Isabel Casillas Guzman. I believe I said her last name right. 
uh, from the, the administrator from the U.S. Small Business Administration will be here. It would be, it would be very worthwhile for you to come. Stu the students are not in school yet. Bring them. Let them see. Let them get information about the Small Business Expo. Um, it's going to be a lot, a lot information and worthwhile to come. You have you you don't well. We want you to register. It's free, so there's a link on our website and on our Facebook page that you can click on and register there. I got an update today. We actually have over 200 registrants already, so it's going to be what it says an expo. And we shared that we are one of two that it will happen in the state of South Carolina. Yes. Farnwell is the other. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Saturday, July 13th, the day after um, that, will be the PD Youth Day Initiative. This will actually be held in Florence. And this is what Mr. Reverend Hemingway was speaking of before. This is the second annual PD Youth Day Initiative. And um, Senator Mike Rickenbach will be one of the speakers. It's going to be a lot going on there. Please bring your youth out there. I am, I'm actually the co-chair of this PD Youth Day Initiative organization. So please do come out on that day as well. We have lots and lots of things going on. I want everybody just to continue to be safe and, be, and stay, try to stay cool in all of this heat that we're experiencing. Um, our students um, are still on summer vacation. Um, they will be starting school back, most of them, August 1st. So I just pray that we all have uh, continue to have a safe summer and to start off a new school year. And I know that there will be other events going on from other organizations, churches. I know there's VBS, Vacation Bible Schools, that's still going on. So just continue to be safe in anything and everything that you do, traveling for your vacations, for your families and all. Um, I appreciate everybody for coming out tonight. I do see Miss Cynthia back there. We will be getting a record. She's over there. <laughs> we will be getting out the um, football um, registration for our recreation. So look out for that. I know you would definitely, the kids will get them when they start in school, the flyers, and they will be bringing them home to mama and daddy. So make sure that you sign your child up for football or cheerleading for our recreation um, for the next school year. And that's all that I have on tonight. Thank you, everyone. I just need an, a motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you.